All right. Welcome to the uh, special um, edition of uh, our meeting for the Police and Fire Commission for the City of Fitchburg. Um, looks, by the looks of it, we have quorum. In fact, everyone is here, which is excellent. Um, so I just like to call the meeting to order as a first measure. And then the uh, second item on the agenda is public appearance appearances uh, for non-agenda items. And we have one person in the audience and anybody online? Okay. And do you have anything to, no comments? Okay. Um, but welcome and I'm glad you're here. Um, next item on the agenda is a report from human services or uh, human resources. Good evening, uh, Commission. So I sent earlier a copy of the draft job posting and the recruitment brochure. I'd like to share my screen for you right now to look over the police brochure. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here. And so I just first off want to give a big kudos to Lieutenant Hartwick who put all of this together um, and did a phenomenal job. I just gave him the content and he made it into something pretty beautiful. So. Um, I'm just going to kind of walk through here. So this recruitment brochure is used for advertising. It's also embedded into our job posting so that um, anyone can learn about what the city of Fitchburg offers. They can learn about the department. They can learn about the, the uh, job opportunities and can see the recruitment timeline. So a lot of pictures. Um, we kind of started out talking about the position and process. Um, so you'll see the pay scale up there. Uh, and then we kind of go through the tentative recruitment process and timeline, a nice visual of kind of what to expect. And then we talk about city government and the police and fire commission. And we talk about our community here so they, they can get to know Fitchburg. And we kind of give a, a picture of the map there, kind of at a glance, you know, how many residents we have, how many households. And then the department, that's you know, very key and very important that you know, our police chief knows kind of what the mission, vision, and values is for the department. And kind of, hopefully I'm not you know, going through this too fast, but then we also have our challenges and opportunities. So you know, as a new employee, you wanna know what you're walking into. So we have listed here some of the top challenges and opportunities that the police chief would have. Uh, this came from Chief Brecklin and is also Mayor Richardson. So if you see um, anything you'd like to edit or add to the brochure, we can certainly look into that. Um, but you know, one of the first challenges and opportunities is equitable and inclusive environment. So making sure that you know we're continuing ongoing diversity trainings, making sure that we're always looking for ways that uh, we can celebrate diversity, equity, and inclusion. Also the accreditation process and looking toward um, having that state level accreditation is very important. And then community building and engagement, making sure that you know we're promoting the transparency and accountability by working with the community. And then employee development and wellness, making sure we're ensuring officer wellness. Um, we've put a lot of great things in uh, in the past, so just looking to ensure that we continue that well-being of the department. And then we have a new police facility, hopefully, uh, in 2024 that we would be looking to occupy by then. So making sure that our new police chief knows that that is in the uh, planning stages and in the budget. And then of course, the town of Madison absorption. So any questions about the challenges and opportunities so far? Okay, so I'm gonna kind of keep scrolling here then. Just one second. Uh, Tom, yeah. did you have one something? So um, just a uh, uh, thought on the challenges and opportunities, you know, the community building and engagement, and, and I, you know, I know these aren't kind of listed in any, um, I assume any ranking or order of importance, but community building and engagement seems, you know, important to me such that maybe that could move, you know, up just to emphasize that, that mm -hmm. point. And, and then, you know, I, I like these as future guideposts for how we as a commission identify the weights to assign to individual traits or goals um, that we as a commission develop with input from the community survey and anyone else who wants to offer thoughts on what those um, different attributes that, that, uh, that are that we're looking for in the police chief. Yeah, we can certainly move up the community building and engagement, absolutely. And then we're gonna we get down to the education and experience. So kind of want to have a little bit more discussion about that. So we made some changes last week about 
the degree requirement and the years of experience. But, you know, we were kind of thinking about the, the years of experience, you know, even right now looking at our command staff, they wouldn't necessarily be eligible, um, you know, and those are the types of, um, you know, people we were looking for that have, maybe they've been a lieutenant or been a deputy chief for only a couple of years or a few years. Um, you know, having this qualification here would actually um, screen these individuals out. So we kind of want to rethink uh, the, the language a little bit here um, so that we're not screening out people that could be qualified. Uh, Chief Brecklin had a recommendation for kind of how to word this. Uh, Chief Brecklin, do you want to give us an example of kind of how to reword this a little bit for the years of experience? I think you could leave it largely the same and just add, uh, you know, at the end there, strongly desired or desired with the five years. And the reason for the thought behind adding that is after some further reflection, I think in light of all of the changes that have taken place in police departments across the country in the last couple of years, I'd hate to exclude anybody who may be, um, you know, in a new role less than five years in that command level spot. Um, I also looked at the applicants that were posted in the paper for the sheriff's position recently, and I think only one of those three applicants would have met that minimum requirement of having five years of command level um, experience. So I think that uh, we should make that modification. I would recommend the body make that modification, and uh, that way it would not unnecessarily limit the applicant pool. Obviously, the city and the Police and Fire Commission would be able to um, evaluate, again, the candidate's total um, you know, body of work, so to speak, as it relates to their career and where they're currently at. So I just think that gives the commission some flexibility uh, without unnecessarily limiting the applicant pool. Any comments from commissioners? Thoughts? When we say um, 10 years progressively responsible, we're talking about 10 years starting as a police officer and then moving up to the five years in supervisory experience with man. That's what. In, in, yep, yep, Rosa, you've got it. So, you know, 10 years of they're increasingly gaining more responsibility, more management experience. Yep. I guess just for my own edification here, so when we talk about 10 years, 10 years total of law enforcement experience, five of those, right how it's currently written, five of those here would be in command, correct? 10 years, including the minimum of five years yep. at a level would be strongly desired. And the, the recommended change is essentially to put that as strongly preferred. Exactly. Mm. In, in regards to the five years, yeah. I think you still want to at least set that benchmark at a minimum of 10 years of experience. Um, and again, that would be the minimum benchmark, I think. So I'm curious for, for reference purposes only of our current staff and in the Fitchburg Police Department, how many of those current members of our staff would have five years of experience at a command level? Zero. Well, you'd have to well, look at- I take that back, I take that back. I think we would have maybe one. You'd want to look at all of the, the job duties that they've held if they have an ability to articulate job duties as a sergeant as command level job duties, then perhaps you would have more than that. But if you were to look strictly at rank and command staff rank, then you would have zero. So, and, and I'm thinking and in, in sensible to the, um, the comments last meeting about the idea that someone may not have a title of lieutenant but in a police department other than Fitchburg may have command level responsibilities that they could highlight as, as um, something that would be applicable for this role. I'm curious for those in, in the room who, who are, have experience with other police departments, you know, do you think five years is too much as well? Or, or you know, are there people in, in different departments that have that experience at other cities and other municipalities that for whatever reason Fitchburg might not yet have? I'm just going to add a question to your question. When we're talking about these five years of experience, 
you mentioned that some people might have uh, sometimes in acting capacity uh, be a sergeant, be a lieutenant for a month or two. Are we talking about continuous five years of experience in command um, um, leadership or involvement? Not this month you could be a sergeant, then you're not a sergeant for 10 months, and then you come back and you, so you do have some command experience, but it's not continuous. Yeah, I think you, we, the commission would have to look again at that whole career. And again, these are minimum benchmarks, the 10 years with the five years of, of command level experience. And, you know, as an example of a, of a situation where, where this is applicable is let's say you have a 15 or a 20 year uh, person with experience in policing and, you know, maybe they've been a sergeant for, you know, they started out as a police officer for five or six years and now they've been a sergeant for 10 years and decided, you know, at year 15, they wanted to move into command staff and maybe only have two, three, four years worth of command level experience. That may not be a candidate that you would want to exclude as, as uh, from consideration. So that's why I think that it may be important to at least have some flexibility with this language. Again, these are minimum qualifications that the city is putting forth for recommendations and um, that, you know, I, I suspect that the, that the most qualified candidates are going to have significantly more than 10 years of experience and probably more than five years of command level experience depending on what the applicant pool looks like. I guess I would just um, add to that that the responsibilities and the duties that they actually are responsible for and execute uh, as a part of that command staff, regardless of, actually if they're sergeant or they're lieutenant, it, regardless of what the position is that they hold, is really what I think we're at the guts of what we're interested in. So what do they actually do, right? Um, and at the end of the day, I think that that is something that is beyond these minimal requirements. So, I mean, your recommendation I think is a good one, in, in my opinion. You can sort of, we can open the door to a broader breadth of people, uh, but you know that doesn't mean that we don't take what they did uh, as primary, and we are the evaluators of that. So, she and I has her hand up. I just wanted to point that out. I just want to agree with Chief Brecklin, and um, I think it's it's right now we want to get applicants. We want to have a good pool. We want to have options. Um, and if that's going to limit the, the local um, police officers, I say open, you know, like you said, preferred. It's just a preferred thing. This way we're not going um, to cross them off the list right away. They can at least get in um, and we can um, give, in, give them a chance. Um, it, because this is, again, this is a want. This is a desired position. This, this person that's applying for this position isn't the same person who was applying for this position 10 years ago. This is a different mentality. This is a different mindset of this chief, of this future chief. Um, and I want to hear from those people who want to hold that position. So I like, I like Chief Breckman's recommendation, and I, um, I, I am along with him. So can I just ask a question quickly about the about procedure? So uh, the Jim, who is a council member, um, is in the audience. Can we have him speak at this point or is it just a formal process at the beginning? He, he was raising his hand essentially. I think he wanted to add to the conversation. I don't know exactly what the protocol is. I, I believe members can, uh, they can speak to, um, you know, non-members can speak to agenda items. So if people are in the room and they want to contribute to the conversation, I believe that that's okay. Chief Brecklin, do you agree with that? I would, I would agree, yes, I think as long as it is comments related to a specific agenda, and I think you would want to say, you know, open it up, which you have for discussion, yep. and then any other comment from members present. Fair enough, and I guess the other piece, I guess, is Tom did ask for anybody that has law enforcement experience to <laughs> pipe up, and you obviously do. So, yes, uh, and the agenda item, I guess, you would be specifically addressing, um, uh, is the the job require or the job announcement and job brochures and the conversation we were just having? Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity um, to speak. Just for those um, in the audience who are viewing this, uh, my name is Jim Wheeler. Um, I spent over 27 years 
um, in the half years with the City of Madison Police Department. I retired as a captain. And on this um, specific issue that is being talked about right now, I can say that in my experience as a commander, I have had sergeants um, who have worked for me who has done excellent work. And when you look at the command um, responsibilities, I mean, you talk about discipline, supervision, evaluations, writing grants, you know, uh, having to fill out budgets and everything else like that. I have personally observed those. And I do I think that, you know, in today's age, it will depend on the department that they're coming from, you know, and looking at their duties. So, you know, you got the qualifications up there, what you're looking for. And I think if that person, like um, Chief Breckland said, can articulate, you know, what they have done and bring that portfolio forward, I think you could probably get some pretty good candidates, you know, especially from larger departments where the responsibilities are even a lot greater at that sergeant, you know, level. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Other comments from the commission? Tom? Well, then I'll, I'll, I'll make, so I, I agree we should change it from a required minimum to some other um, requirement. I, I, I guess my preference would be to say a strong preference for five years or at least five years experience at a command level. I, I do, there is value in experience, of course. Um, that language won't keep any and shouldn't keep any applicants from applying, even if they don't have that five years of experience. But I, I think for me personally, it would be a strong preference. I don't believe for all sorts of reasons we can kind of serve as an opportunity to train up someone in um, those command level skills. Um, I, I think it is properly a position that requires some level of experience. That's why I would suggest a strong preference for at least five years experience at a command level. Well, I'm okay. just saying I agree with Tom. Yep, and I sense. actually, I do too. Um, I don't know that we need to vote on each and every one of these changes. Um, it's mm -hmm. by a matter of protocol. So as long as there's um, no strong objections to using uh, strongly preferred, I think that's the language we should go with. Well, and to that point, I have no, um, I, I think we should respectfully disagree from time to time as a commission. And, and I, you know, I think to the extent someone does have a strong objection on any one of the issues that we talk about today, I think we should raise them and feel comfortable raising them. Sheena stated it so eloquently at our last meeting about how we can just agree to disagree and, and respectfully do so. Mm -hmm. And there may be you know, dissenting votes, which I think is a healthy indica an, an indication of a healthy organization when there is open discussion dissenting and in votes, um, but then everyone gets behind the, the decision of the collective whole. Agreed. Okay. Excellent. So I will keep moving through the education experience. So we basically just added management style and personal attributes, um, kind of the, you know, the things that we're really looking for for someone to have. And then of course our benefits and more information section. We also included information, just how to learn more about Fitchburg. So if you click on the picture, it takes you right to the annual report, it takes you to Fitchburg, Wisconsin, uh, where you can learn more about just what it's like to live and uh, work here. So um, the brochure, again, will be embedded in the job posting and it will be used for advertising. Um, any questions or thoughts about the brochure before I take you to the job posting? I think the brochure is fantastic. It's it's very well done. It's it's a great visual, um, and I, I think it speaks volumes about the entire community, the department, and everything that comes with being a police chief. So definitely, um, definitely a job well done by everybody involved. I second that, and I particularly like the images and uh, what that projects. Um, I think that that was extremely well done. Um, That's great. Thank you, everybody. And that, again, uh, kudos to Ned, who is uh, one of the lieutenants that put this together. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going, going to take you to our job posting. So bear with me here. Okay, so now what you're going to see in front of you is the police chief job posting. So when they get to our website, they're going to see uh, here's where they can actually click on the police chief brochure. They can see the tentative timeline again on here. Uh, we added the city of Fitchburg is an equal opportunity employer. That was in the job brochure as well. 
And then this is just your typical uh, duties, responsibilities, and this is pulled right from the job description that you approved last week. And the minimum qualifications will be sure to add. Um, this mirrors everything that was in the brochure. So we'll, when we make that change about strongly desired or strongly preferred for the command level staff, we'll, we'll do the same here on the job posting. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the supplemental questions. These are the ones, the essay questions that we added. Uh, we agreed to number, uh, it was at the time one, two, and five. Um, so I just, number five, I put as number one. This is the um, importance, you know, asking for their demonstrated experience and commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, as being a very diverse city, you know, how have they shown that commitment? And then uh, the second question was related to the budgeting, the planning, collective bargaining. Uh, Chief Breslin had added uh, community relations slash relationship building experience. Uh, and then number three was the policy question. How have they had, um, you know, what kind of policy change have they met, made? How was it implemented and so on? So these again are required that they fill out. Um, it's a text box field, so typically um, you know, we don't have a standard. It can only be one page or two pages. Um, it, it's a, it's pretty good size. I, it's not overwhelming to read through. Um, everybody submits different, uh, a different length, which actually works out pretty well. Um, it's really easy to go through it. And then you don't have the trouble of people submitting their application without the supplemental essay questions attached if you have a text box, which sometimes can happen if, you're, if you are requiring an additional attachment to be added to the application. So this is the job uh, posting, the draft job posting. So again, we're looking at posting this tomorrow if all looks well. Any questions about that part of the process? Chief Franklin. Sir, I just wonder for clarification, I noticed in the job posting and I don't, don't, didn't catch if it was still in the job brochure, but it mentions as one of the steps, the group interview with the police and fire commission. I'm just curious oh, if uh, you would want to have a discussion about possibly just removing the group uh, from that, that terminology just to avoid any commu uh, confusion that it's not an individual interview with the police and fire commission. Yeah, we'll update the terminology on the recruitment timeline to match so that same on the posting. Good call. And then, Sheena, you had your hand up too. Um, I don't know why it did that. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, I got to lower my hand. I got to lower it. Sorry. Thank you. Zoom malfunction. Yes, Anything Tom. else with the chapter? Yes, Tom has thought. So, um, and it's something in that same tentative recruitment process and timeline, and I think it was in the brochure as well. You know, there's reference to the public reception, which again, I thought was wonderfully valuable for the city administrator position. And the, the com one component of that public reception that I thought was extremely valuable was the opportunity for the community to ask questions directly to the candidates. And I one wonder if that's something that we are still contemplating, and if so, it might be something to make note of in, in this recruitment process and timeline, because I suspect that's a fairly daunting component of the recruitment process. Yep, we still need to work through the public reception details. Uh, we can add that as one of our agenda items at the perhaps the June 23rd meeting when we go over the survey results and the objective benchmarks for application screening, we might learn some ideas and thoughts from the, the community and employee survey about the public reception. So that would be a thought. So we don't necessarily need to know those details right now, but you know, before the position closes, we can have those ready. Another thought, if I could. Mm -hmm. um, the um, background check, I think, will be an important component of this. And, and again, individually, I would like to see a pretty thorough background check. And that hopefully is just assumed and implied in this type of position. But I think that might also be something to reference um, as part of the contingent offer that it would include a, a, a thorough background check. Absolutely. And then last comment from me, I think. Um, in the supplemental question number two, 
um, if I recall, the equitable um, working group suggested that budgeting might not be something that's that's emphasized. And mm -hmm. and I, I think that community relations, relationship building, which is the last one listed here, may be more appropriate to list first um, and push budget and capital improvement down. Um, again, that goes to how we as a commission weight different um, attributes of these candidates, but but I think that'd be relevant for applicants looking at the application to see that that is a prominent um, requirement of the position. And I guess I would just add to that, to, I would agree with that, but then if we're going to make that change, I, I would suggest that um, supervision employee development and performance management is probably number two, um, just as long as we're ordering things and, <laughs> and orders of importance. Um, and. You know, budgeting, I think we addressed budgeting correctly here. That's what we discussed, budgeting slash. Um, but that could probably be pushed further down the list because of we did emphasize the fact that that was probably something that somebody could come with maybe some lighter skills and they could learn that on the job and or it's not as big of an emphasis as community building. Absolutely, that sounds like a plan. I've got community relations as supervisory, collective, and then budgeting. So just reordering those. Any further comments or thoughts from the commission? Okay, thank you, Sarah. Yeah. I think it looks very good. Okay, and then the next thing we've got here is the draft PFC webpage. So I am going to bring up the PFC webpage. Um, so we were looking at a couple other municipalities and when they had a police, police chief process, they did a really great job of updating the PFC page, uh, kind of always putting updates out there. It was a central place for folks to find information. So the goal would be to have something similar so that we can use our page to communicate about the police chief process. Bear with me here. So I did a little, um, a little update here and I will share my screen. Alrighty. So um, this is our PFC page as of right now. So we have our updated time of 5 p.m. Uh, we always have our link to our agendas and minutes. So I don't know if any of you have been out here before, but um, this page exists and, and we've got our members listed here, the terms that, uh, that they uh, work up until our president, vice president identified. And then we talk a little bit about the composition, the summary of duties per the statute. And then we get into, you know, if someone wants to make a formal complaint, how they can go about that. They can actually access the form on the site. And then um, I just put a police chief search 2021. Um, so this is just draft. We can change this. We can make updates. Um, we're a little limited for what we can do as far as visual, you know, making some like pretty timelines. It's, it's very text based, unfortunately. Um, I, we can add pictures if we wanted to, but um, this is kind of kind of what we have to work with right now. We can add bold, we can add colors and such, but um, I just said in preparation for the upcoming police chief selection process, the Fitchburg PFC is asking to, for input from uh, Fitchburg residents, city staff, community and business leaders regarding the traits, characteristics and skills they feel are most important when selecting the city's next police chief. Your feedback is important and will be used to help us find the most qualified candidates. The survey is available in English and Spanish, and if you need the survey provided in another language, please reach out to Sarah in HR. Um, and then I just put accepting applications May 25th through June 28th, and then more details about the position, recruitment process, and timeline will be available in the job posting and job brochure that will be accessible uh, on May 25th. So this is where I can actually have a link to the job posting, a link to the, the recruitment brochure, a link to um, anything else that we decide we want to put on the, the PFC page. Thoughts from commissioners? Ideas? I guess I will make one up front, which is I think that <clears throat> um, I, I, I respect what you're saying about limitations in regards to timelines and nice graphs. 
Uh, but I think at a minimum we could raise that um, higher on the uh, on the page. Um, that's my suggestion anyways, just so that it has more prominence. Um, I do think that timeline is uh, extremely important. And so turning that into a link of some sort um, so that they can actually get to that brochure and they can see a full uh, timeline of what we intend to do. Just because if there is gonna be engagement, I mean, people are busy and we want them to be able to be engaged at different points in the process when they can. Um, um, so those are my two thoughts, at least initially. Any other thoughts from the commission? Okay, and I guess I would also say that this is probably not set in stone as well, correct? <laughs> so oh, yeah, as, as, we, yep, as we work through the process, we can do improvements and, uh, and move this yep. forward. Um, okay. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then I'm gonna share the draft community and staff survey here. So one moment. Okay, so remember that it's not going to be, it's not going to necessarily look like this. It, on paper, it's going to be similar to this, but electronically, it'll be much more user friendly. Um, but basically, we'll just have this little paragraph at the top of, you know, letting folks know what this is and why we're looking to get their feedback. We're going to be looking for the survey to close Monday, June 21st, so that we can get enough time to get the results together for the PFC to review. And then we kind of walk through the core values. So at our last meeting, we identified that we wanted to add the two core values uh, from the Fitchburg Police Department that weren't already part of the core values of the city, which were teamwork and respect. So you'll see those two were added on there. So basically we're first asking the respondents to select the two core values that they believe are most critical for the police chief. And then they'll go on to personal characteristics. This is where they'll choose up to five that they feel are most important for the police chief to possess. And then we'll go down to leadership qualities. And here we're looking for up to three that they feel is most important for the police chief to have. Um, from there, we talked in one of our meetings about how we kind of wanted a more overarching question, something, uh, you know, or maybe it was more open-ended or um, when the hiring tool meeting uh, met, they did suggest this question, but they suggested putting what those priorities are in a ranking so that people could rank them. Because sometimes you get asked a question and you don't, it might be kind of hard to think about all the different priorities a police chief might have. So having all the options listed and having people rank them might be a little bit easier. But the question is, please rank the below priorities you feel are most important for our next police chief to focus on. Or we could just keep it open-ended and say, what do you believe should be the top priorities for our next police chief? Um, this might help the PFC get some direction as far as, you know, the types of interview questions that we want to ask, the type of um, experience that we're looking for our next chief to have. And then it goes on to additional comments. So we can go back up to that, but um, just a, a box that we can have for people to write anything that they want. And then we go down to the demographic area. We did add a spot in here where people can indicate if they are a Fitchburg Police Department employee. I know that was important to the commission. Uh, so that we can better identify who fills, who is filling these uh, surveys out. And then uh, we get on to, you know, gender, age, ethnicity, and race so that we can better gauge, you know, who, who's answering our surveys, are we doing, a, are we getting a good representation of the community? So all of these will, you know, be not required so people can put prefer not to answer, but at least it will give us an opportunity to gather those demographics. Any questions about the survey or thoughts about number four or other questions that you'd like added? I guess I have one up front, which is community engagement. So we've talked about that on several, uh, at several different points in the job description and in the, um, in the brochure. Um, there mm -hmm. are elements of community engagement in um, several of the personal characteristics and uh, leadership qualities, but I think maybe under leadership qualities, it really maybe deserves its own category. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I do think it's been an emphasis of the things we've talked about and very important uh, for the next police chief. Okay. Other thoughts from commissioners?
I guess I have <laughs> just a question. Um, why ask the race or ethnicity or age of the individuals who are answering the survey? And, and I, I wonder, you know, if we, I mean, we, if we collect that information, how does that input the response and the, you know, I assume it doesn't go to the quality of the response. Um, I just, I, that just strikes me as odd. And it, it, it generates for me another, another thought about the candidates themselves. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I wonder if it's better if we don't know the name, age, you know, any identifying characteristics of candidates, at least in the early stages of the process, so as to avoid some of those, um, I mean, that, those, the, it's an equal employment opportunity, and um, it just strikes me that, that that's information I don't think we need to consider. You're talking specifically about in the response of survey participants, right? Well, yeah, I guess to start, yeah, the response to the survey, the survey participants. I, I don't know what I don't know what that adds. From an HR standpoint, what it adds is it shows us the effectiveness of our outreach. So, um, are we are we getting a representative? I mean, Fitchburg is very diverse. Are we getting diversity in our you know our responses of the people in the community, or are we getting just one segment or one group of the population? Um, so it, oftentimes that's why you'll see HR add demographics to surveys is to better better gauge are we getting um, are we getting responses just from one certain group and um, so it just helps provide a more a better holistic uh, view of the effectiveness of our survey and that's just from an HR standpoint. And I, I think that makes a great good deal of sense. I mean, we want to know if these are targeted and if we're reaching you know the broad spectrum essentially of you know the, that is Fitchburg. Um, from an HR perspective, I'm not, I tend to agree, I'm not so sure what the value is specifically for the commission in regards to um, the respondents, uh, but if, if, H, if it's valuable for HR, I don't see harm, I guess, in it, so it's. I find it valuable for me all as a commissioner because we are trying to reach out to the community to see who do they want as a police chief, and like Sarah said, is how effective are this survey is gonna be um, I, I want to reach out to that community and be effective in what we do. I want them to tell me um, who they want. So I think I probably was one of the ones who brought it up. I, see, I asked about the demographics of our survey the last time because we didn't know um, how effective it was and who, yeah. So it's a way of measuring that. And as far as the candidates, I believe that's how it was done before. The commissioners did not know ahead of time their age, their race, any of that. That wasn't, that's the way it was done, so. Yeah, you're exactly right, Rosa. I mean, the, the commission will never know the age, the ethnicity, the gender of the candidates themselves. That's just something HR collects uh, for demographics, for applicant tracking and EEO reporting. But, um, you know, for here, this is just identifying who, who is it, you know, filling out this survey so that we can know, did our outreach efforts in certain neighborhoods work, you know, there's different ways we can do our outreach. You know, we can utilize the schools, we can utilize our h and navigators, our healthy neighborhoods and, uh, navigators. And, um, you know, when we did the city administrator, all we did was put it on our website um, and we put it on some Facebook, social media. But I think in our last PFC, the concern was, you know, how many people and who are, are watching the city's Facebook page and filling out the survey? Is it actually reaching um, other areas of Fitchburg that, you know, we want feedback from. Mm -hmm. And I guess just to add to that, are you going to track how the respondents um, responded? So how many through the website, how many through mail? That would be an interesting piece, I guess, as well. For me, I'm talking specific, not so much for the commission, I don't think, but just simply from HR's perspective, because that does speak to how, you know, how effective the outreach was. Right. Yeah. I mean, we'll be able to check whether we uh, got it returned back in paper or if it was filled out electronically, but we might want to ask the source of how they heard about the survey. That, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I think I'll add that. Okay. 
Other thoughts from the commission? Okay. I have a question okay. for Tom. Sure thing, Ron. It's on now. Okay. Tom, did you think that um, by those identifying characteristics that it might create opportunity for bias? I guess in theory, yeah. I, I, I mean, someone's race, ethnicity, color, age doesn't matter to me to an answer to a survey or to a candidate or anything. And it just, it, it, I mean, I understand, I understand the, the reasons to collect it for, I guess, outreach, you know, tracking outreach. But, you know, and I assume we're not going to, we're not going to know the person who said, you know, A, B, and C in response to the survey is a, you know, a, an Asian woman who's age 45. So I guess for tracking purposes, it makes sense. It just, again, it, it just strikes me as odd that, it, again, age, race, color, ethnicity, any of the protected characteristics don't matter to the quality of answers we get or the survey it, itself. And I don't think we're trying to measure quality of answers because these are their answers. Whatever they say, it's good. Um, so that's not what we're looking for. But I think in terms of what you said, the outreach and I even think that that information is helpful to a new chief if he comes in and he knows who's, who's saying what in the community and how could that could be um, serve as a guidance for someone when they go into the community so they know. So it could be used in so many ways and I, I find it, it's a positive thing. Yeah, I guess to that point, I mean, as far as being beneficial potentially to uh, the next chief or to the police department in general, um, could give indication of how and who to reach out, right? As far as community building and those things, so. Okay, if there's no further comment on that, next. Yeah, so we, now we've got survey outreach. So we really need, uh, need to think about how are we getting the survey out? How are people hearing about it? Um, you know, we talked a little bit about how we had paper surveys in the foyer of City Hall for administrator, but how many people can get into City Hall? Um, are there ways that we can get the survey out to them? And we do have the Healthy Neighborhoods Navigators where um, there are uh, two part-time employees. Now we have one navigator, a part-time employee who works in the neighborhoods and, um, you know, we potentially could give her some paper surveys. Um, or a, a paper with a link to how to access the survey. And, she, you know, we could see if she could give it out to uh, di different neighborhood leaders. And, um, you know, we can see, I did reach out to Oregon School, um, and they're going to get back to me on whether or not we can utilize uh, the schools for passing on a link to the survey uh, to residents or, um, you know, parents of the kids that go to those schools. And so there's a lot of different ways we can do it. So I guess the first question is, we, we already know that we're gonna be having this Spanish or this uh, survey in Spanish. So it's gonna be English and Spanish. Um, we're gonna have it on our city website. We're gonna have it on the city's social media. That means Twitter, Facebook. Um, are, what other ways would the PFC like to see um, making, ensuring that the survey gets out to all the different areas of Fitchburg? I guess I just have a question first, which is um, on the, so there are a lot of, there are a lot of questions there and we should definitely discuss the different ways of getting it out. But in regards to the website specifically, um, mm -hmm. job posting, job brochure and survey, what's the prominence on the Fitchburg website? And so I guess what's the sort of overall plan about, is it gonna be on the front page? Is it gonna be on the PFC page? How exactly is that going to be? Just because that speaks a lot to um, who is going to see it and when, right? So. Yeah, so we had it on the main page of the city's website when we did the, the administrator. We could have the survey right to the Police and Fire Commission page. So then when we have it on social media, it links it back to the PFC page. Um, you know, really, it, it's up to the PFC. So, I mean, it, it's certainly something we can put on both. We could put it on the city's main page and the PFC page. Um, it's going to be just one link that we can kind of put all over the place. Do you guys keep track? I mean, of my is can so, can one person answer? I mean, fill out two surveys. That's a good question. Um, boy, I'm trying to recall if we had that situation. Um, I I think it is possible for someone to fill out a couple of surveys. Um, 
I'll have to double check with our IT director. I think there might be a way based on like your computer IP address that we can limit that, that you've already responded or you only get to uh, respond once. I will have to talk to Matt, our IT director, about that. And I'm not sure if that's good or bad. I mean, if someone has more to say, okay, you have more to say, but it just occurred to me. With regards to your question um, before, I know that with this um, Spanish-speaking community, there's, there's an older uh, person that has a, a show on the um, yeah. city's, um, whatever you call that, I forgot. And she could bring that up there. And there's also the radio station where they could just have one um, segment uh, dedicated to advertisement and then talk about the survey. Absolutely. That's a really great idea. So you mentioned um, English and Spanish. Is there a significant Asian, specifically Hmong population in Fitchburg? There is. And we can certainly look into having uh, the, the survey in um, uh, Hmong language. We can certainly look into that. I have to um, see about how we did with the Spanish. I don't want to necessarily use Google Translate, and I don't think that that's what we used to um, put the survey that we had last time in Spanish. So I will look into that. But if there isn't any issue and it, it's relatively easy, and um, I'm, again, I'm not sure what service we use, we could look at adding that survey in um, in Hmong. I guess I would be in favor of doing that. Certainly, uh, if there's no impediment to doing it, we, sh we definitely should. The more people we can reach out to, the better, period. Okay. I can reach out to the Healthy Neighborhoods uh, Navigators and have them drop off paper surveys to a different neighborhood leaders if, if the commission is okay with that. Are, are those navigators across the entire city? So they have specified neighborhoods, but I think that they utilize them for other, for, you know, in the planning department, I think they've made trips to other neighborhoods. I think they're utilized throughout the city, I really do. Um, even though they might be typically focused in one neighborhood. So if they can, um, you know, to different neighborhoods within the city of Fitchburg, would that be, would the commission be open to that? Hmm. The other thought I had is the senior center, I think, would be a valuable resource for that. And then maybe working with the chamber of, the Fitchburg Chamber of Commerce or whatever their, their formal name is to distribute it amongst the, the businesses as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good idea. I also think last time the older um, the olders also helped in, in putting the word out um, mm -hmm. to their constituents. So, Chief Brooklyn. Yes, sir. I, I think that uh, if you have access to any listservs that the city is maintaining for neighborhood associations, businesses. Mm -hmm. um, is citizen uh, signups like on the web where they're able to be notified of agendas and those sorts of things, perhaps uh, utilizing those could be beneficial also to, to spread the word about it. Great idea. Okay. Well, very, very good, any other ideas for outreach and? We're good. Okay, those were good ones though, thanks. I'm sorry, I didn't have my hand raised, but um, I'd like to see um, city city employees promoting this as well. Um, I think that's you know that that um, you know span up. Sorry, um, the the reach that everybody individually can give to multiple people. Um, I think everybody knows somebody else, and um, I think if we can encourage and support um, other people. If we can, I'm sorry, my kids are just got at me. Um, if we can encourage city agencies and department heads and leaders to say, "Hey, pass this on, spread this, spread this along, let let other people know," you know, because we have friends all over the place, and um, I think encouraging um, sharing it would be would be beneficial too. Yep, and Sheen, I think that's a great point. I mean, can, you know, we all know five people, right? And we can talk about that with just the people we know and that will spread. So it, it, and to the point of it's the commission, 
the council, if they could help out and do that same thing. And then also, obviously, all the employees of the city. So I see myself now going around the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, that is all I've got for outreach. You know, actually going back to the survey, um, I just realized we didn't actually talk about number four. So are you, are you open to the fourth question about what do you believe should be the top priorities for our next police chief? And are you okay with just having it open-ended and letting people answer that? Or do you prefer to have a ranking of priorities? And specifically, you're talking about personal characteristics and? After the personal characteristics and the leadership, um, mm -hmm. the PFC at one meeting wanted to add a oh. kind of a more over, overarching question. Okay. Uh, so if you look at number four here, it says, please rank the below priorities you feel are most important for our next police chief to focus on, or what do you believe should be the top priorities for our next police chief? Um, do you have a, do, do you like that question? And then do you prefer to have it where they're priorities that they can rank or just a text box where they can provide what they believe should be the top priorities. Um, do you have I like the idea of an open-ended response because as we create our list of priorities and weight those, it would be interesting to see what comes to the top of the list for many people. Yeah, I guess I, I would second that because one of, one of the things we're doing in the first couple of sections is that we're, I noticed this reading through that we're just being very directive, right? So we're saying, hey, this is the list of things we think are important, pick five. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing because I think that we can help, you know, you help people sort of categorize things and I think that's helpful. But having a, a couple of wide open questions, or like one wide open question and then really just a whatever you want to put in this for comments is probably pretty powerful for the people filling out the survey because it really just does allow them to, you know, Freeform and tell mm -hmm. them what they think. Other thoughts on that? Could I see the previous questions? The previous the survey three, questions? Yeah, just to see yeah, how. Yeah, so actually they were only mm -hmm. one, two, and three here. So um, it was exactly what you're looking at right in front of you, except we just had an additional comment box. We didn't have another question. So the first they had to pick the two core values then they had to pick up to five personal characteristics, and then they picked up to three leadership qualities, and then we closed it with an additional comment box. Oh. So all we're doing here for this survey this time is adding a fourth question where we kind of add an additional box where they can just provide what they feel are the top priorities for our mm. next police chief. Sarah, how do you, um, in HR, rank that and use that, or is this just more opinion-based? Because the Initially, I'd said uh, ranking whatever the order is um, with the options given is going to be, um, and then we get to value what we feel is, um, as a commission, as a city, as an agency, what is what is most priority or most um, is most is top priority, and then we can compile a number. What are we looking for with this response? Is it more um, individual responses, or are you looking to get a, a result or a number from this? from an HR standpoint, I'm looking to just get feedback on what they feel are the top priorities. The text box, I, I, I feel like would be a lot easier because, you know, again, the top priorities are going to be different for everybody. And I don't know that um, we might have our top priorities, but it might not be the same ones as those in the community. So if we are missing any, um, the equitable hiring tool team did think that having a list would be helpful for people because they might not know necessarily what priorities a police chief should have. And um, you know, being able to see options to help rank it might be helpful. Um, but, but again, I mean, having that text box answer, I think will provide a lot of insight for the, the commission when you review the results so that um, it doesn't keep people 
you know, within a box where they have to choose certain priorities. Mm -hmm. It's really a more open ended. So, um, you know, really, it's just trying to gain more information from the respondents um, in another another type of question. That sounds good. Thank you. You bet. Tom. Well, and I pulled up. So our colleagues in the city of Monona um, asked a general question, what are the top three challenges the police chief will face upon being appointed chief? And they got 128 different responses, some of the very similar kinds of answers, but um, but I think I, 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 I see value in, in that open-ended question. We might be surprised what comes to the top. And maybe what we could do is somehow reference in that second part of the or, what do you believe should be top priorities for our next police chief you know, maybe say something effective, inclusive of what's above or in addition to what's above? Because we've already in the previous questions identified some of the important, you know, priorities within the department. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. So Tom, you're saying keep number four, but maybe just put in there in addition to the ones above so that, um, you know, we're indicating, yep, we know that communication, delegation, leadership are priorities of our next police chief. But are, or are you stating we should use the same question Monona had with the, the three challenges? Okay, now you're talking about another a fifth question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It would be, except for you wouldn't, so you're asking them to assess the information that was sort of already ranked above, essentially. Yeah, I, I guess my two cents on that is I, I find that a little, so it's, it's inclusive of what they already did. Um, and I just, I think that keeping it simple, um, and I don't mean that in a negative way, I just mean that in a, in a very honest and true way, um, and just having that open-ended priorities and really you know, getting their gut take on what they think is important. I, I like keeping that question simple and direct. You know, you, you know how um, surveys are, just getting people to fill them out sometimes is a struggle. If it's too complicated and too elongated, that could discourage some response, responses. Mm -hmm. In other words, kiss. Keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> and we talk about having um, like a multiple choice because, because of that. Because people might just draw a blank and, oh, what? But then... The idea of having the additional comments, that's where people could just, those who like to talk more, say more, then could just expand in what they, what they want and achieve. Mm -hmm. So I like, I like the, what do you believe should be, or what are your top priorities for our next chief? Um, that's, you know, gives them whatever, the opportunity to say whatever they want there. Because people have already ranked in the three previous questions, they have already ranked what they want. So we don't need to do that again there. Okay. So we have had good discussion on this. Do we have general consensus? I, th I think we have general consensus on having that question just sort of be direct and just having it be what do you believe, sh uh, what do you believe should be the top priorities for the next police chief? Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for bringing us back to that, Sarah. We did miss that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that closes that part. So now we're on to item E, so discuss and finalize future special meetings of the PFC. So first off, thank you. I know that um, for our new members especially, um, you may not have known you were gonna walk into a police chief recruitment. So I am this, you know, obviously we typically only met once a month and now we're meeting, um, you know, quite a bit. So. Um, with a police chief recruitment, that's needed, right? There's a lot of things to go through and a lot of um, steps along the way. So I, I'm trying to map out 
the next few meetings all the way up until when we hire the chief so that it's not, uh, you know, me emailing once a week or every couple of weeks to say, hey, can we get on the calendar? So um, the first meeting that I'm looking for is the week of June 23rd. So we already have a scheduled meeting June 16th. Um, if we, instead of having a meeting June 16th, meet the week of June 23rd, then we can um, have the survey results all ready to go. Um, and then we can actually be able to review those and set those objective benchmarks for the application screening. So it gives us uh, enough time to have that all ready where um, I don't know that we're gonna have survey results ready by the, the June 16th meeting or yeah, June 16th meeting. So curious if, if anyone would be available on the 23rd. The only issue is that there is a committee of the whole meeting that night at 7 p.m. So if we meet at five, we're trying to always schedule our meetings where there's no meetings behind us. But in this case, there would be a meeting at seven that we would have to be out of the room for. So the potential, we could meet earlier than five on that evening if that works for the commission, or we can just keep the regularly scheduled meeting on and we can try to make the survey results work for that day. So I'm just throwing out that first day. Question. We, what are the rules regarding this COVID and us using the room the, where we used to meet? Yeah, so we're still working out um, that. So, you know, with everything changing next week in terms of capacity limits and mask wearing, um, you know, there's that potential we could go back to using the genie ceiling room, which is that smaller room, and then having that ability to have a couple of meetings going at the same time instead of everybody trying to uh, use the council chambers. So if that's the case, um, you know, it's possible we could, you know, still meet June 23rd, even with the committee as a whole uh, at seven o'clock. So we should do that next week. The committee of the whole, they meet at seven o'clock that evening? So yeah. even if we met at five, we would have two hours. Is that we're going to be reviewing this? I'm just looking at the basic agenda for that evening. Yeah, so we would be reviewing survey results, um, but it would be the everything that we normally would have in a June meeting as well. The police yeah. agenda items, the fire agenda items. Um, so, I mean, it, it would be a long meeting. I'd almost recommend that we meet a little bit earlier than five, just to make sure that we don't run out of time. Because I think reviewing those objective benchmarks will be um, a longer process and the survey results too. Is can we meet at that? I mean, can we meet in that room with mask and all oh, that's not that's not gonna be possible. And then we don't have to worry about leaving this room. That's well, we'll know next week. I think I think that we'll be able to start meeting in different rooms now because everything will be kind of dropping as far as capacity limits and all of that. So if that is the case, um, Scott Yarbrough and with Back TV, can you confirm, like if that is the case, could you guys do a back or a committee of the whole at seven, but still have PFC running potentially in the GD ceiling room? We could, but we'd run out of places to broadcast that. Okay. starts to run really long. So yeah, it's possible to do both at the same time if we've got access to that. Okay. And we would be talking about a two hour meeting at that time. I don't know that it's gonna go that long and it sounds like we may have options. So I, one of the things I was just looking at the calendar, I mean, is, is Thursday a possibility that week? No, so there's court in the council. Well, court in the chambers. Now, again, if we're going back to where the genie ceiling room is available, um, Scott, it, can Fact TV do the court and have something else? Or is court like the only thing you can do at that on of those Thursday nights? It's the same, uh, same problem as before. Same deal? Do it, okay. gotta, the, the other meeting has to land someplace unexpected. That Thursday won't work for me. That doesn't need to, or maybe I could try and appear virtu virtually, but I'll be out of town that day. Okay. What if we, what if, and it's another option, maybe not the best option, what if we met on the 16th for our regular scheduled agenda and then kept the 23rd just for the survey? And it sounds like, Sarah, you're contemplating that at that meeting on the 23rd, we would also create the criteria that are used by the interview panel and then by ultimately the PFC for the hiring decision. 
Yeah, so that is a thought. Then we would at least get the, we could get the whole, um, by then, by the, the 16th, we'll have the interim police chief discussion. Um, we'll have a, a, some items from our attorney this week about that whole discussion that happened from the last meeting. So we could hit close that up at the 16th meeting, have the police and fire, and then on the 23rd review survey results. And then I would bring some objective benchmark criteria for you. So it's not like the PFC has to create that. I'll already bring a, a, a recommendation and kind of what it could look like. And then the PFC can weigh in. So yeah, that would work if, if that works for the commission members. I prefer that if we could, because I would hate to rush the the recruitment part of the meeting just because. Yeah, so I, I would like that. I, I, I like that idea as well. Um, uh, for another reason too, we're separating out our regular monthly uh, duties, for lack of a better phrase, our regu regular monthly uh, agenda items mm -hmm. uh, from the special process of, of hiring a new chief. All right, wonderful. All right, so then we'll schedule, we'll keep the Sheena 16th and, on, and yep. then we'll schedule for the 23rd. I'm sorry, Sarah. Oh, Sheena special. and Ron, are oh. you guys okay with that solution? Uh, the yes, 23rd? Sheena. Uh, actually, the 26th and the 23rd, it would be, correct? The 16th and the 23rd. Yeah, 20th. sorry, 16th and 23rd. Uh, sure, sure. Okay. Sheena? She's a, yeah, that works for me. Okay. I think that's a great idea. We've got lots to talk about, and we don't want to be rushed, so I am in for both days. All right, thanks. Keep the same time, right? Five? Yep, five o'clock for both days. Okay. Okay, and then uh, we'll need a second meeting. So yep. this is the one where the PFC approves who comes in for those first interviews and to review the interview questions to actually use. So um, we'll have those that in closed session. We're looking for the week of July 5th. There's actually only one day open for um, FACT TV to do this. It would be Tuesday, July 6th. I know that's kind of right after the 4th of July holiday. Would Tuesday on July 6th at 5 work for everybody? I would have to do it online, but... July 6th works for me. Okay. July 6 works for Tom as well. Ditto. I can make it work. Awesome. Perfect. July All right. 6th. So then we'll July be 6th. Tuesday, July 6th, July 6th yes. at 5 for that part. And then um, the week of August 2nd, this is for you to actually interview the finalists. Exciting. And have that public reception. So, um, what we're looking at is either Tuesday, August 3rd, or Wednesday, August 4th. Do any of those days work? And that's wide open. So, I mean, we can schedule, have kind of, you know, really, really pick our times there. And this is where, I mean, I don't know if you want to interview during the day or have the PFC have the interviews in the evening because of, you know, scheduling. Um, you know, we could have them potentially interview with the PFC before the public reception if it doesn't work for you to come during day hours because of your other commitments. Sarah, these are not going to be virtual interviews? Or um, I So I envision actually them being in person, um, not necessarily because um, this, this will be one of the final steps because we'll be here for the public reception. So yeah, this will be in person. If a, a member can't make it in person, we can have the virtual option there so that you can still be part of the process. And I, I guess at this point, we don't know exactly what that day is going to look like. So we still are determining that, right? So we're kind of choosing a day uh, where we uh, are going to do our piece of this, but there's going to be a lot of events that day as well, right? So when we actually <laughs> do the interviewing is not being decided right now. Um, right, so we, we can come back later and decide this, maybe at our, our June meeting, if you'd like, to give you some time to look at your calendars and see what would work for you, again, for either Tuesday, August 3rd, or Wednesday, August 4th. Okay. I think I could probably make both days work, but I think it may be wisest to um, lay out the day, uh, see what that's actually going to look like, because it may, so for instance, if we were going to interview in the morning as a group, because right, that works out best for everybody. Um, that may have a different, the, the day may matter more, right? Rather than 
um, if we're going to do this, in the, if we're, ours was going to be towards the end of the day uh, at our normal 5 o'clock time, that also might open up time for people. So I think it would be good to lay that day out first and then uh, choose the actual day. Why don't I add it laying out that day for our June 23rd meeting so that we can have plenty of time to kind of set aside that date, especially with FACT TV to make sure they're available. Because um, FACT TV will be helping us with the public reception piece. And then the last day would be, it, it kind of works out. Uh, we need one more meeting and that's to actually look at the conditional uh, or the background checks and make a hire. And that would be on our regular scheduled August 18th meeting. If you wanted to hold it during that, that time. Um, we're the only meeting that day. So we can start at five and just have our normally scheduled police and fire agenda items. And then we can go into closed session at the end to actually talk about the, all, look at all the backgrounds of the candidates that, that you're the finalist and then choose a hire. Is that okay to, to do that after the, our regularly scheduled 818 meeting or do you prefer to get a different date on the calendar? So just so I'm clear on that, you're proposing that on the, <clears throat> on the fourth or the third, we would have uh, our interview of the, of the candidates. Um, and then they would have um, the inter or they would have a meeting with the mayor and that whole process. Um, and then on the 18th, we would actually go have our normal meeting, and then we would go into closed session and we would deliberate, essentially talk about and decide on which candidate we thought was most qualified. Um, that seems like that might be a very long meeting at that point. Um, I guess I might be in favor of splitting those two things up. I don't know what everybody else in the council thinks, but it seems like that made, um, I guess my two cents is that it deserves its own. <laughs> um, Would you mind repeating that, Jeff? I, I missed kind of the trajectory there, or timeline you were laying out. Yeah, so I was just saying that on um, August 4th or 3rd, the, one of those two days would be the day where we would actually mm -hmm. interview the candidates. Um, and then I think Sarah was proposing that on the 18th, we would have our normal meeting, but then we would go into closed session essentially to decide on what, who, what our choice was for chief or who our choice was for chief. Um, and I was saying we should split those two things up into two separate days. Well, I just want to highlight on the, actually on the August 3rd or August 4th, after the PFC actually has their interview and after the public reception and after it's done, you'll meet again at, right after that, that day of events to actually decide who okay. you want to go forward with to so that we can start the background. So that then by the 818 meeting, we have the full background completed and we can bring those for the finals that you had chosen back on August uh, 3rd or 4th. So I hope that makes sense. Yes, and I missed that part. I think that that's, that's, that'll break it up some because I was just thinking mm -hmm. it would be a long deliberation. Yep. So there would be, we would have a, a closed session meeting of the Police and Fire Commission on August 3rd or August 4th or whatever those two dates were to decide who we want to make a conditional offer to. Then yep. you would do so the you'll essentially have two closed sessions. You'll have one closed session just to interview the candidates, and that would be one at a time. And then we'd have the public reception. You'd have we'd have the city tour, the mayor one on one. Mayor would come in and talk to you, and then you'd have it would be like the last step of the process where then you have a closed session uh, to to then decide. Okay, let's talk about the candidates. Let's talk about the process. The feedback from the mayor, feedback from the city tour team, and and so on to decide who you would like to further background um, to, to be invited then to, you know, essentially proceed in the process. That's going to be a long meeting. It will be a long meeting. <laughs> it's going to be a long day, actually. But that's a good thing. We've talked about that in the past, I think. So, um, okay. So it, if that is the case, we'd be a, essentially we'd be um, deciding on conditional offers and then we would be discussing the backgrounds and so forth at the, I think that given that, I think it's okay to have that all on the 18th. What do you think, Rosa or Tom or Ron? Sheila? Oh, you chose that the 18th, you're saying that we would just have the background? Yep, you'll just have all the background. All the so back say you, you decided two of the candidates were stellar, you would like to go have a full background on those two candidates. 
on the 18th of August, you would receive the full background for those two individuals and the commission would review and maybe discuss who they felt would be the stronger candidate and then approve that hiring closed session. So Jeff, you're saying that we could have it right after a regular meeting. Yeah, so I guess a couple of things. One is, I don't know, we don't know what the candidate pool is gonna look like. Um, so if, if there was just one person that we made a conditional offers, offer to, and we were really just assessing the background of one person, I think the 18th is sufficient. Just because I think that would be a re probably a relatively short uh, conversation because we had already made a determination and we were just assessing the background information, right? Yep. But if it was multiple candidates, that may be a, a longer conversation. But I don't know that we need to determine one or two meetings right now. Um, and I, I, I guess some of that would be driven by how many candidates we have going into that final process for me. That makes sense to me. Why not? Does that make sense, Sarah? It does. Honestly, the longest days for the PFC is going to be that August 3rd or August 4th. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, it, it's potential that you may even decide we'll have all the events on the 3rd and then we'll convene the PFC the following day in a, a morning session to actually, you know, have, have some time to think about the candidates, how the day went, and then and then discuss who to proceed with. So it could be you have two, two meetings in two days, you know, one on the 3rd and one on the 4th. Okay. I guess um, I would be in favor of putting down the meeting, the 18th is our standard meeting anyways, not putting in a, a, uh, an additional meeting at this point, but you know, much of this is gonna be driven by the candidate pool and how, how those days sort of unfold. Um, so we'll have to just stay fluid in that regard. That sounds good to me. Perfect. So that is the time. So that's the only additional meetings that we'll need then. So this, this looks really good. So what I can do is in the minutes I can, um, you know, reiterate what these, these meeting times are and I can send some save the dates to um, sooner than later. So this gets on your calendar, but thank you for going through that. Yes, Tom. One other process question. How, so there's a panel interview, um, with a panel of people who are gonna screen the initial applicants. Um, how is that panel assigned and who, who decides who's on that panel? Yeah, so the PFC can play a role in deciding who are the different panel members throughout the process. So, um, you know, if you remember the recruitment timeline and process, there were a number of different, um, we talk about having, you know, whether it's a union president, whether it's community member, a business leader, uh, you know, a, a number of different ideas, but we didn't name names as far as who we wanted to tap into for these different processes. So, um, you know, what you, we can do is we can actually talk about who we'd like to, the, the specifics of who we'd like to be involved, or um, I can bring thoughts and ideas, um, you know, a listing of here's a number of different community members, here's a, dumper, a number of different business leaders. Um, you know, we, we do this all the time where we, we reach out to people to be on our interviewing panels. So, I have quite the list that I can bring with me to, to help. Um, and then the PFC members can bring a list of people that they would like to consider. And then we can just have a discussion about that. Um, we could have a discussion about that at the June 23rd meeting, although we'll wanna get on the calendar for the, the application review team because they'll be doing that relatively quickly after June 23rd. So, um, so actually, we may want to add that to the June 16th meeting agenda so that we give enough time for people who might want to be part of the application scoring process to get to designate some time to do that. That would be the only police chief recruitment item to add to the June 16th meeting if the commission's okay with that. Unless sure. you have different ideas of how you'd like to talk about panel members and who is involved in the different steps of the process. So um, <clears throat> obviously people <clears throat> on that panel will need to be residents of Fitchburg? So yes and no. So we, I mean, we try to tap into obviously if they're community members, we, we want them to be Fitchburg residents, um, but we can use uh, community members from, you know, neighboring municipalities. Um, we've reached out to the city of Madison before. I mean, Harper Donahue, who is the HR director over there, helped us with our equitable hiring tool for police chiefs. Uh, so, I mean, we definitely can utilize other people um, 
who you know we feel would be would bring a, a good uh, perspective to the process. So, yep, it doesn't have to just be Fitchburg. And there are actually two panels, right? There, so there's a professional panel and there's a community panel. Yeah, there's quite a few panels. I mean, there's a lot of people that need to be part of this process. I mean, you've got the application scoring process, you've got the first panel interviews, you have the uh, community panel presentations. So it's very, I mean, we're, we're essentially looking for about 15 people to help us out all together in this process. And on uh, June 16th, yes, June 16th and June 23rd have the same two hour uh, constraint. Is that true? Um, June 23rd, remember, if we can be in the genie ceiling room, we won't have a time constraint. Okay. Um, June 16th, we're the only ones on the calendar. I guess given that, I, um, I think given the, uh, the topic of the panels, I think that might be a lengthy conversation, might be best served on the 16th if we don't have any constraints. Does the commission want to talk about all the, should we just kind of hammer out who will be part of all the processes going forward? Or do you only want to talk about who will be part of the application scoring? I guess I would be in favor of lining up who we think should be a part of those panels. Obviously, we're going to be leaning on HR to pick members and, and actually choose yep. resources. Um, but I, I would be in favor of laying out as much of that process that evening as we can. Okay. Other account, yes, I'm here seeing a lot of head shakes. All right. Okay, excellent. I will add that to the June 16th, um, adding, you know, and discussing the panel members. And that's it. That's all I've got for the commission tonight. Okay. Does Anything else on the process? Any other questions? Uh, like I've said a couple of times, it's not completely set in stone. We're, it's a work in progress. Uh, but we're making good progress, and thank you very much, Sarah, and thank you to everybody that's put together material so far. Um, I think we're on, we're, uh, speaking for myself, um, I think that uh, we're, on, we're in, on task to uh, complete, have a good, good recruitment um, and an inclusive one. So that's pretty good. Um, any other uh, announcements? Next agenda items. Seeing no announcements. Um, yes, motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> I second. Okay, very good. All right. We got a vote on the last one. Okay. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. Any nays? Adjourned. <laughs>